The sheer vast complexity of the spirit world is the same as the immense hugeness of the physical universe. The world of modern physics is dominated by Jewish theorists. Modern physics often put forward theories which have come straight from the pages of the Kabbalah. According to the mystical author Helena Blavatsky, the fabled kingdom of Atlantis was destroyed by groups of magicians who summoned demonic forces, eventually destroying a prehistoric civilization, which, some people believe, had crystal, plasma, electrical, and psychic technologies that eventually were used by the pharaohs of Egypt to build awe-inspiring buildings using giant granite blocks which even today's largest cranes would not be able to lift. According to Helena Blavatsky, the technologies used in Egypt were powered by energy drawn directly from the cosmos and the spirit world. Right now, Billions of people are living in ignorance, whilst right before their very eyes, they watch the physical world being manipulated into violence, war, and chaos. Many rulers of the world are members of secret societies who summon demons and devils from the lower planes of the spirit world. The rituals of cults such as the Golden Dawn, World International Freemasonry, and the Knights Templar all originated with the teachings of the Kabbalah. The royal political elite have giant libraries, such as the Beinecke Archive of Rare Books at Yale University, which teach them how to summon forth and command the negative forces of the universe.
We live in a democratic dictatorship. It is a dictatorship run by people who perform rituals. It is a dictatorship run by people who privately summon demons. That sounds difficult to believe, but it is the truth. Cuneiform tablets and cylinder seals made in ancient Iraq, the former kingdom of Babylon, tell the story of two extraterrestrial star gods coming to Earth and genetically manipulating mankind. These alien star gods were called Enlil and Enki. Their alien race was called the Anunnaki which roughly translated means princes of the royal genetic seed. Worship of these alien beings takes many forms, and the royal political elite have built special temples and lodges all over planet Earth, where ceremonies are performed to invoke the spirit of the Anunnaki and other extraterrestrials. This film is about something so obvious that it stares us right in the face but is never discussed openly. That is, that on every continent of planet Earth there are giant temples which are aligned to the stars and planets these temples are actually astronomical calculators, space observatories, and more importantly, they are places devoted to magical ritual. Massive stone temple complexes all over the world, from Cambodia to Mexico, were built for the same reason. These temples were used to summon spirits. The pyramids of Giza are actually astronomical computers which are no less sophisticated for their time than our computers are for our age. These temples exactly gauge the precise movements of planets, stars and constellations so that elaborate magical rituals can be performed at specific times. This film exposes some of the highest secrets of the Kabbalah, Freemasonry, the Knights Templar, and the global network of secret societies loosely described as the Illuminati. These cults have perverted ancient rituals and now summon not just gods or angels, nor even just spirits of their ancestors, but these cults are summoning demons and some believe they are even summoning the devil himself. The highest secret of the Hebrew Kabbalah, Alistair Crowley's Ordo Templi Orientis, and L. Ron Hubbard's Scientology cults is that magical ritual can be used to contact not only angels and demons, 
but also the spirits of extraterrestrials who inhabit other parts of the universe. One of the best sources of information about the spirit world comes from Eastern mystical author Swami Panchadasai. Swami Panchadasai's book, entitled The Astral World, was first printed in 1915. By understanding the spirit world, we can understand the goal of magical ritual performed by the global network of secret societies witch covens, freemasons and cabalists. The spirit world is every bit as real as the physical world which we inhabit. Magical ceremonies work like computer programs, repeating the names of spirits in particular orders, just like a computer language is actually a list of commands. These ancient rituals unlock the subconscious mind and open telepathic gateways to the spirit world. Sadhus, Sufis and Gurus are Eastern mystics who teach that there are seven great astral planes in the spirit world. The number seven has therefore become one of the most important occult numbers. The lowest of these seven astral planes is the so-called material plane, which is the physical world we live in. The second plane is called the plane of forces and is unlike the other seven planes as it contains the forces of nature such as electricity, heat, light, kinetic energy, gravity and the atomic forces which Jewish scientists discovered when they split the atom. In 1943, Robert Oppenheimer's team calculated the forces which would be unleashed from splitting a single atom. They became concerned that a global chain reaction would take place, igniting all the hydrogen and gases in the Earth's atmosphere and thus incinerating the entire planet. Nevertheless, funded by politicians and military officers who are traditionally members of cabalistically inspired secret societies, Robert Oppenheimer and his team of mostly Jewish physicists went ahead and exploded the first atomic bomb, which ripped apart the finer atomic forces of nature for the first time, creating a catastrophic shockwave not just in the physical world, but also in the spirit world. The so-called Cold War 
created a worldwide psychological war of terror in the minds of every man, woman, and child, threatening to completely annihilate every living creature and even the planet itself in an orgy of atomic destruction. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds the third plane of the spirit world is the so-called astral plane the word astral is derived from Greek and it refers to the stars. Next is the fourth plane, often described as the mental plane. In addition to these four planes, there are three higher planes which are extremely difficult to comprehend to anyone who is on the lower four planes. Contemplation of these higher astral planes is the goal of many Buddhists. The higher planes are what Christians call heaven. Throughout history, Freemasons, Knights Templars, Satanists, Magi, Wizards, Shamans, Voodoo Doctors, Kabbalists, Monks, and even Popes have engaged in magical ritual in order to contact the spirits of dead people, demons, and the elemental spiritual forces of nature which reside on the astral planes. The spirit world, with its seven individual astral planes, surround planet Earth, interpenetrating each other like a vast onion, where each layer of the spirit world vibrates at different frequencies. These frequencies correlate to the seven astral planes of the spirit world and can actually be seen by clairvoyant people. These people have often been described as mediums, prophets, and oracles. One of the most successful prophets in recent times was Dr. Nostradamus, who used powdered nutmeg and other hallucinogenic herbs to aid his visions of the spirit world. In fact, the Holy Bible lists more than 30 hallucinogenic plants which are used in rituals around the world to see into the spirit world. Swear. Swear that you will never speak with anyone other than those who have been initiated about what I will teach you. If you break this oath, you will be killed, not by the Inquisition, but by one of us. Do you understand? I swear. Now, notice how the catch works. You will use it while I'm away. These 
books. Here is Al-Khasalas' work, the elixir of bliss, in his own hand. There, the scriptures of the Kabbalah, Solomon's key. Many of them had the power to see the future. You must learn how they did that. So you can decipher your dreams. Nothing is accidental. Everything is according to God's law. What is that? It leads to the inner secret in yourself. And there you will see the future. Not me. Partly. I will tell you the exact formula later. You must be very careful. Too much can be poisonous. You have to let your body get used to it slowly. But then your visions will be clearer. What is that? It's from our friend Leonardo. A machine that drives underwater. And this. An explosion greater than anything we know. Psilocybin mushrooms are common in northern Europe and were the ritual drug of choice for druids and Nordic shamans. So-called magic mushrooms, henbane, hemlock, belladonna, mandrake, Syrian rue, hashish, fermented honey, and of course opium, have all been used to see the spirit world. Mystics living in underground temples in ancient Greece ate fermented honey cakes in order to have visions of spirits. To this day, beehives are a secret symbol of Masonic lodges, which are part of the Bavarian Illuminati. Adam Weishaupt the leaders of the Bavarian Illuminati ate hashish during rituals, a practice which was popular amongst the Jesuits of the Alambrados cult in Spain. The effects of hallucinogenic plants, especially plants which contain DMT, dimethyltryptamine, reveal a very fine transparent lattice which can sometimes be seen actually binding the objects and beings around you into a mesh of reality. This is known as the veil. sometimes be seen shimmering and vibrating like a gossamer dusting over all surfaces. Shamans and magicians who use these hallucinogenic plants during rituals train their third eye, which is a term that refers to the ability to see spirits on the astral planes. The whole of planet Earth is covered with energy, which is known as the ether. This flows across the sky like an invisible weather system. According to Sir Oliver Lodge, one of the pioneer inventors of radio, the ether is actually a spiritual domain. 
and it interconnects with planets and stars right across the universe. The ether is the unseen sacred life force which mystics speak of around the world. Modern science ignorantly teaches that the heart is merely a pump. However, miles of bookshelves around the world are filled with literature and occult research which proves that the heart is actually an emotional organ which beats faster with excitement or sexual attraction or when under stress. Many forms of physical exercise have been developed which enable one to counterbalance the extremes of emotion and train the heart to respond in a more balanced and safe way to emotional problems and harrowing experiences. These physical exercises are usually referred to as yoga. Alistair Crowley was a devotee of yoga as any serious magician must be, for it brings into active fusion the important trinity of mind, body and spirit. Gaining full command over the activity of the heart is a gateway to unlocking different forms of consciousness. To merely describe the heart as a pump ignores the important role the heart plays in allowing us to meditate and connect with the spirits in the spirit world. Blood is the carrier medium for the life force. The life force itself goes under many different names in many different cultures around the world. The most popular names for the life force in the Indian subcontinent are Chi or Prana. Chinese medicine teaches that the Chi life force is made stronger by fresh oxygen. This is why tree groves rich in fresh oxygen breathed out by the woodland have been chosen for ritual by druids, pagans and witches for thousands of years. Within our blood there are cells whose main function is to carry oxygen to the vital organs. In addition to distributing the vital life force around the body, blood in magical terms 
also absorbs the emotional energy every time it passes through the heart. To this very day, tree groves are chosen by secret societies to perform sacrificial rituals. Bohemian Grove in California, initiates gather in a tree grove and witness a ceremony where the spirit of compassion or care is symbolically cremated and sacrificed to a god who takes the form of an owl. In 2001, evidence began to appear from medical experts which suggests that our heart can absorb and remember part of our personality. It is as though the life force pumping in our blood and the emotional states we experience leave an indelible spiritual hallmark in the heart. Nexus magazine recently published a series of articles about the phenomena known as organ memory. Several doctors and patients have testified that some personality traits of a heart donor manifest in the character of the recipient. After receiving the heart of a young woman, a male patient could sing and knit and sew in exactly the same manner as the dead donor. It was as if the woman's spirit, as well as her heart, had been transplanted into the man. This phenomena has caused several transplant surgeons to question their purely mechanical attitude towards the human heart. The heart contains elements of one's own personality and your blood gushes through your heart at a faster rate when sexually, emotionally and, as we shall soon see, magically excited. Ancient cultures such as Judaism were up to their armpits in blood. Their temples had channels cut into the stones where gallons of blood from animals, men, women, and yes, even children would flow and congeal amongst the peasants who paid a few pennies in lieu of slicing the throat of a sacrificial victim themselves. Blood rituals have been performed worldwide since the dawn of time, and even to this day is reenacted in symbolic form via the Catholic Mass of eating and drinking the so-called body of Christ. Black magicians who advocate blood sacrifice, such as Alistair Crowley, who recommended that a nine-year-old child of above-average intelligence made the ideal sacrificial candidate, are well aware 
of the esoteric qualities of blood and the life force. Hot blood, freshly drained from a living creature which has recently passed through the emotionally animated arteries of the heart, actually contains a concentration of the sacred chi life force. According to black magicians such as Alistair Crowley and Eliphas Levi, the last beat of the heart, the last breath of the victim, carry the soul into the spirit world. Transference of self. That of your child or that of Tanner? No! <laughs> now, if our two remaining guests will permit, we may proceed. Almighty and all powerful set, Father of darkness. King of death, I pledge this night to thee to do thy work and be thy servant. There was a word you said before. Say them again. And the blood of this child shall be I cannot. You must. My baby's going to die if you don't. You must speak those words again. The bride of chaos. The bride of chaos. The rider. With this knife, do I draw out the blood which is thy life. This form of black magic circumvents the natural path of the victim's soul, which would normally rise into a higher vibratory state and take up residence in the spirit world. Instead, the life force is diverted into the body of the magician or absorbed by a demon. Once the demon has spiritually absorbed the life force of the sacrificial victim, the magician will often ask the spirit to divulge information about the past, present or future. Keep 
The shape and color of the heart would often be studied for divination. And hundreds of temples around the world, from the Himalayas to the Mediterranean, were set up to divine information from spirits. These temple sites became known as oracles. The so-called oracles were female or androgynous psychics, usually bred from birth for their clairvoyant powers. Oracles would spend most of their time floating in underground pools, engaged in permanent trance, receiving visions directly from the spirit world. In Robert Temple's fascinating book, Netherworld, he explored the underground oracles in Italy. Here, caves and stone-lined chambers were constructed, complete with an underground man-made river, which symbolically represented the gap between the physical world and the spirit world. The man-made river at the underground oracle complex of Baia, Italy, was called the River Styx. When Freemasons and Satanists such as Benjamin Franklin and George Washington founded the government system in Washington, they oversaw the building of a giant necropolis, a temple of death, which was used to house the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument and White House. This complex in Washington, D.C. is a modern replica of an ancient necropolis based on the architecture of the underground temple complex in Baia, Italy, and also other temple sites in Greece and Egypt. Washington, D.C. also features a man-made river like the River Styx at Baia, in Italy. In ancient times, underground oracle temples were established right across the Mediterranean, most notably on the Greek islands. Here, the Book of Revelation was written on the island of Patmos, 
where visions and communications from spirits were given to St. John as he lay with his head inserted into a niche in the side of a cave. At Delphi and other ancient oracle sites, people would travel from all over the known world to listen to the teachings of spirits. Communications from spirits inspired the greatest authors, poets and philosophers of the classical world. questions and we'll get the hell out of here. Tell me how... Shh. They're sleeping. Sorry. Tell me how all this works. The photon milk acts as both a nutrient supply and a liquid conductor. It enhances the images that each of them receive. We call the female Agatha. The twins are Arthur and Dash. We scan by way of optical tomography. White light pinpoints pulse along the entire length of the headgear and are reread after absorption through their brain tissue. In other words, we see what they see. They don't feel any pain. We keep their heads pretty well stocked with dopamine and endorphins. Plus, we maintain careful control over the serotonin levels. I want them to drift off into too deep a sleep. They can't be kept too awake either. It's better if you don't think of them as human. No, they're much more than that. Science has stolen most of our miracles. In a way, they give us hope. Hope of the existence of the divine. I find it interesting that some people have begun to deify the precogs. Precogs are pattern recognition filters, that's all. Yet you call this room the temple. Just a nickname. The oracle isn't where the power is anyway. The power's always been with the priests, even if they had to invent the oracle. Well, you guys are nodding like you actually know what the hell he's talking about. Well, come on, Chief. The way we work, changing destiny and all, I mean, we're more like clergy than cops. Jed? Yeah. Go to work. All of you. Ancient Greece and Rome are the birthplaces of philosophy. The greatest classical philosophers, such as Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, divined information from spirits. Divination was an important part of classical life and was practiced on a daily basis. Socrates was just one of thousands of intellectuals who descended into the subterranean caverns and consulted the Oracle of Delphi. The classical world practiced many forms of divination, such as divination by lightning and thunderbolts, by the flights of birds known as augury, by the chance words uttered by mad people called cledonism, 
and one of the most popular forms of divination was performed by examining the shape, color, and texture of the vital organs of freshly sacrificed animals and people. Textbooks were published that were studied by the greatest scholars, which described the prophetic meanings of dreams. It was widely understood that the spirits of one's family and the spirits of the star gods would speak to you using a symbolic visual language in your dreams. An ancient book of dream prophecies written by Artemidorius inspired many of the great works of philosophy. Soothsayers, prophets and magicians would also foretell future events from reading omens, such as the birth of two-headed calves and other genetic deformities in animals. To this day, North American shamans read good and bad omens into the birth of white bull calves. At Osborne House on the Isle of Wight, the Saxa Coburg Gotha royal family, under the leadership of Queen Victoria, kept a private collection of preserved, deformed animals, such as a deer with five legs and other multi headed freaks of nature which have historically always been associated with good and bad omens. In ancient Greece, future events were prophesied by virginal maidens who would hold naked rituals in forests, invoking the spirits of animals, trees and plants, and gaze into bowls of water, reading the reflections as messages from nature spirits. This technique was used by the famous medieval Dr. Nostradamus, who would drug himself with nutmeg powder, thorn apple, and belladonna, sitting for hours staring into bowls of water, which revealed apocalyptic events, which he wrote down in a series of books known as the Prophecies of Nostradamus. Dr. Nostradamus had many clients who would commission him to read the future. One of his clients was Catherine de Medici of France, who was involved in black magic. Dr. Nostradamus accurately predicted the bloody death of the French royal family. Children, this is the famous Dr. de Nostradam, about whom I've told you so much. Monsieur, this is my eldest son, Francois, the future king of France. You are welcome, monsieur. May I introduce my wife, Mary, Queen of Scotland. I'm very honored that you should receive me. This is my eldest daughter, Elizabeth. Henry! <laughs> Duke d'Alençon, Charles, Claude. Little Margot.
I want to know the truth, whether I like it or not. Each of your sons will be king of France, but you will outlive them all.